All right. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. We're talking um, federal character now, and there's a lot going on, particularly with appointments um, in recent times. I don't want to mention anyone in particular. A lot of appointments and questions about... Some people even refer to them as the Lagos boys, you know, and, mm. and, and in recent times, there are questions about are we indeed obey, obeying the federal character a law that we have in place. I'm sure that um, the government has a way to explain all of this. I remember uh, in, during President Muhammadu Buhari's time, yeah. when all of this also came to limelight, the government at the time released a list of appointees to say, I mean, there's actually a balance regardless of what you see. The question would then yeah. be, the question that was raised at that time would just say, what's the caliber of balance that you have? You know, you have some people in some more, more critical places and then you have others in other places and then you say you have a balance. You know, so juicy I don't want. I didn't want to say I juicy. Want to juicy. I didn't want to say juicy. Okay. <laughs> all right. We have someone joining us to help make sense of what's going on uh, today, all the way from Abuja. Mr. Jide Ojo is a public affairs analyst. Mr. Jide Ojo, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Absolutely. All right, so uh, always nice to have you here. If you want to go into our constitution, that's 1919 our constitution, as amended, you find uh, the uh, executive body, that's a federal character commission, that's the executive body that is established to uh, really implement and enforce the federal character principle of fairness and equity in the distribution of public posts and socioeconomic infrastructures among the various federating units of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now you can find that one in Act Number 34 of 1996. But right now, and you know, coincidentally, you are also a Yorubama. We're not going tribal this morning, but there's no gain saying that some people are of the view that President Bola Tinubu is really uh, giving appointments to those who are from the Southwest and prioritizing them above others from other parts of the country. In fact, the Northern Elders Forum came out to say it, I mean, clearly of what they felt with regards to his appointment. What's your take on this? Most of you live in Abuja. What are you hearing? Thank you, Shem. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, of course, um, uh, we have a uh, federal character principle in Section 4 of the Constitution. We also have Federal Character Commission as one of the federal executive bodies in section 197 of the constitution. But um, this are uh, observed in breach by successive administration. Uh, so you will recall the Milokan philosophy, our Lokan, a Milokan, uh, Lagos Lokan, Southwest Lokan. And uh, that is why Batu for presidency ticket and victory is very fierce because we have an executive and imperial president who can do and undo, who can make you a millionaire and billionaire overnight. Um, I recall very well that uh, under former president Muhammadu Buhari, uh, People have, uh, you know, accused him of clannishness and cronism. And in fact, when he was to appoint the service chiefs, he didn't even appoint one single person from the Southeast Nigeria. And people are saying, are you saying that there is no one qualified among the, uh, you know, people of Southeast extraction who are Igbos? That you could appoint. And then he was saying, Oh, you know, General Lucky Irabo is from is from Agbo, and Agbo is Delta Igbo. But we know the way we know Southeast to be, uh, Delta is a South South state. Even though some part, part of Delta State where I had the privilege of doing my youth service, uh, particularly the Oshimile people. Ibuzo, Aguashuku, uh, from um, Buluku, even to where we had our camp then uh, in um, I've forgotten Iseluku, 
they are all classified as de Delta Igbo. But the five Southeast states we know it to be are uh, Imo, Anambra, Ebonyi, Enugu, and um, and, uh, and Abia. So the same thing happened when uh, when uh, Good Lord Jonathan became president. Some people are saying Good Lord Jonathan is Igbo from South South, from Bayesa, and that his uh, Igbo name is uh, a Billy. Uh, good luck, a village, Jonathan. Anyway, um, the point I'm trying to make is that it, it didn't start with Ashwaju, and I think it should not have continued in that tradition that he met, where accusing pink fingers will be pointed at him, at uh, you know, a legalization of 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 his administration, because you will find out that. Majority of his uh, former cabinet member in Lagos State uh, are being appointed into federal position and very sensitive one. You may want to disagree with your colleague about GC, but we know that uh, there are there are sensitive and powerful positions, and there are those positions that you just occupy for the sake of making the numbers, and that's why even in National Assembly. They are very powerful individual in National Assembly. If you make them chairman of certain committees, they are most likely going to reject. They will say that this is a grade C position you are giving me. We, I want grade A position where they will exert a lot of influence. So um, without, without much ado, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious challenge that the Federal Character Commission does not have the political will to challenge the presidency and call the presidency to order. You can also see the rukus going on within the Federal Character Commission, where there are allegations that some positions are being sold. Appointments are being sold by Federal Character Commission. It's under investigation as we have, as we speak. You are, you are, news, you are in the news, news business. So it's something you could do a Google fact check, and, and you'll find out that even the the, the current Federal Character Commission itself is distracted uh, by allegations of abuse of office and corruption and all of that. So how would such an institution hold presidency to account and, and call the attention of Mr. President to the fact that, look, you are not doing this the right way. There should not be preponderance of any tribe or ethnic group or religious group in federal appointments. But that's unfortunately what is currently uh, the situation as we are. All right, thank you very much. You, you brought two angles to the conversation. First, you talked about the equalization of the government. You know, that's quite, I find that quite interesting. Uh, and then again, you talked about uh, positions being graded, you know, A, B, C, and what have you. Uh, but I'm not aware, I'm not sure that the federal character principle or federal character law, uh, you know, classifies positions. I'm not sure. Uh, so, so then the, the president, you know, we then have a window to say, I have ten positions to, to give out. I give out five. I mean, I give out. Okay, I have twelve, and I give out two to each of the geopolitical zones, regardless of which ones are A or B or C. And then you can argue for all you want. He makes the service chiefs all from one region and then appoints everybody else from every, anywhere else. And then this tells you, I'm still within the law. Isn't that the case? Well, you see, whatever abuse of office being a um, politician may want to commit, they always have uh, a, a, a justification for it. And it's, it's very sad. Okay, um, the economy of Nigeria is in the south is in the hands of the southwest as I speak with you. Look at who is the finance minister, who is the minister, who is the who is the FRS chairman, who is the custom uh cost um the general of customs, who is even the NIS and Nigeria Immigration Service and Controller General, who is the central bank governor? who is the chairman of FIRS. These are very powerful economic positions that determine the barometer of how the country will fare economic-wise. But 
if you flip that, if you flip that, you also find in the security sector, um, is, is, Tinubu is just trying to readjust and rearrange. But even in trying to do that, he is also leaning towards the southwest. Because with the, the appointment of DIG, uh, DG of DSS and then the Inspector General of Police, uh, it that means two very powerful security positions, including that of Chief of Army Staff, is in the hands of the Southwest. Perhaps you may, I'm not a politician, so maybe I, I will just uh, have an hypothetical answer for you, my brother, that for some of us who are critics who are not politicians. Uh, the politicians usually laugh us off as being ignorant and novice and not knowing what we are saying. Because for them, it's regime protection they want. They want who they can trust, who can deliver, who will watch their back, who will not betray them. And they know that if they go the federal character way, uh, they, they may not really have the loyalty of the people that they desire. But don't also forget that federal character principle is not only in terms of appointment, it's also in terms of uh, citing of projects. And, and what, what you also have seen is that uh, there is lopsided. Recall the argument of Senator Abdul Ningi early in the year that the North was so shortchanged in the 2024 budget, uh, while the South had the uh, larger chunk of the, uh, of the budget. And that's why I say, you know, because we run an executive presidency, you can see how Tinubu insisted on having an Akwabio as the chairman, as the, as the president of the Senate. And when he got that, now justice um, Ariwana is from Southwest. The one that succeeded him now, Justice Kudira Kikireko, is from Lagos. That one does not have any imprimatur of the presidency because it follows seniority uh, and uh, whatever in terms of appointment. But what, what we are saying is that where it is practically possible, let's try this equity, justice, and fairness principle. Because when you look at that section four of the Constitution, I think subsection six, that talks about federal character principle, it, it inched it on the basis of national loyalty and national unity. And that's why, you know, the Igbos today are clamoring that they have been sidelined and marginalized and discriminated against because uh, since 1970, when the Civil War ended, uh, the, there has been a serious trust issue about giving sensitive position to an Igbo man. Whether it is written, whether it's unwritten, but what we see in practice is that even the position of vice president since the time of Alex Ekwemi in 1979 to 83, there has not been any Igbo man uh, that has been the president or the vice president. So what, what the framers of the constitution actually did was to promote national loyalty and national unity by insisting on having a federal character principle where there will be no domination of any tribe or religion from any part of the country. All right, but what we have seen in practice is contrary to what is uh, preached by the Constitution. We have to go in a minute, and that's how much we have. But the question uh, that many people are asking, I'd like to get your side to it. It's about competence for you or obedience in terms of the uh, federal character principle, what it really entails for you. 40 seconds, please. Well, um, so there is no part of the country where you won't find competent people. There is no part. So it, it's not about... Uh, I mean, in Yobe State, in Sanfara State, in uh, in Bornu State, are you telling me that if you want competent people, you will not find in those places? Or you are saying in Ekiti or any part of, or even Bayelsa, that's as, as just its local government. Are you saying that if you drill down, if you really did a proper search, you will not find competent people? 
I, I think it's just a patronage system. We we have we have put in place a court system of uh, party patronage uh, and build court personality that you know individuals whether at the federal or state level can can make and not make All individuals. Right, all so, right. because we, of the are... enormous power that is vested in their office all right and that's why you know corruption is not seen we have to go and now GD. we have to go we corruption have to bring is not you just back. about stealing money or embezzlement but abuse of office abuse of public office for all right, private Jude, we want to thank you corruption. indeed for coming on the show. We'll definitely bring you back because I know that time can never be enough for us to discuss federal character. Even in a year, 365 days, people will still have their voices coming out. We want to thank you indeed for making our time and sharing your thoughts with us on this today. My pleasure. Sure. All right.